And as the U.S. economy looks to rebound from the COVID-19 pandemic, a new report shows one fast-growing group is playing a major role in the country's economic growth. Since 2010, the GDP from Latinos living in the United States has grown from $1.7 trillion to $2.7 trillion. Putting that number in perspective, if Latinos living in the U.S. were an independent country, that GDP would be tied for the seventh largest in the world. So what is behind this massive growth? Let's bring in Saul Trujillo. He's the co-founder of Latitude, a group aiming to showcase the importance of Latinos to the American economy. He's also co-founder of the Latino Donor Collaborative, who offer, authored that new GDP report. And he joins us from a Latitude event happening right now in San Diego. So, Saul, what's behind this growth? Well, good morning, Mika and uh, Willie. I'd just like to say, first of all, you know, this is a great day. It's a great day to talk about exactly what you said, the contributions of U.S. Latinos to our economy and how they essentially are now driving the vast majority of growth. So that increase of a trillion dollars of GDP in the last decade is unparalleled other than you have to look at China and India as comparables in terms of the size and growth rates. So one of the things that we like to do here is talk about what's fueling it, as your question asked. Mm -hmm. Number one, it's about population growth. So the U.S. Latino cohort has been the disproportionate 60, 70 percent, depending upon the decade or the half decade growth rates uh, as a percentage of total population. So that's number one. Number two is it's a very youthful cohort. Two thirds of Latinos are native born and the average age is about 19. So when we talk about incomes and we talk about a lot of things, I think Mika, Willie, you can always remember back when you were 19, how much money you were making versus when you were 29 or 39. And so the second thing is that youthfulness. It sets us into a stage like in India, like a Malaysia, like in Indonesia, the growth economies of the world. And the third thing is, is the entrepreneurship. The Latino cohort has been the most entrepreneurial in the sense of business formations by a lot in terms of this country. Over 50% of employer-owned firms and 80% of what you might call sole proprietor plus employer-owned kind of firms. And the final thing is consumption. In that period of time that you just referred to, Mika, over 120% faster consumption growth rate than the rest of the economy. So all the variables that you want to grow an economy are right here. This population cohort is going to grow to 100 million people within the next 20 years or so because of its youthfulness. Mm -hmm. And so it's a great attribute that we have that sets us apart from Japan, Europe, and all the other mature economies. So this is all so interesting um, and interesting to see how well Latinos are doing. I think it's a story many Americans don't know because we often associate Latinos coming into the country, uh, new immigrants coming in from Latin America with low income jobs. And you're saying now there's a whole entrepreneurial class which is moving beyond that. How much backlash do you think uh, Latinos might face because of their growing? I mean, the dark side of immigrants coming sometimes into new countries and doing well is that they do face a backlash. Do you still see Latino workers be, as being perceived as the low income workers who are not particularly welcomed by some Americans, by some, you know, under the pre former president, we saw that. Are you worried that there is a backlash against Latino workers in the country? Well, I'm, I'm always worried about a lot of things in our economy. We, not everything goes perfectly well and not everybody understands how you actually grow an economy. But we just did a survey at the Latino Donor Collaborative and it's gonna be released this week in Latitude, which shows that in 2012, we did a survey of all Americans that said, what do you think about Latinos, basically? And the answer was, we, two thirds of the people answered basically that the Latinos are takers. They come here, they go on welfare, they tie up schools, tie up hospitals, et cetera. Now we just did another survey and Ana Valdez is gonna be presenting it later in the conference. And we saw that in today's world, about two thirds now think of Latinos as economic contributors. And that's why you see in surveys around immigration reform and all kinds of others, about two thirds of the population are in support of that. We'll go one, one step further. Today we have 10, almost 11 million unfilled jobs. 
And you might say there's an available workforce of six or seven million people. So there's a big gap. We need more workers. And the one thing that has also been proven is that the Latino cohort is the most productive cohort in our country, of all cohorts. So, you know, if the, the framers of our constitution and our country were drawing a job description of who's entrepreneurial, who's a family, who's of faith, who is, you know, patriotic, et cetera, et cetera, this Latino cohort fits the bill almost perfectly. And so that's what we're trying to do at Latitude is create this conversation. What you're doing today is really important, talking about it, not just about Hispanic Heritage Month. This is every day of the year and will be for the next two or three decades as the driver. Saul Trujillo, thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. We Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.